What's going on everybody? It's your boy Shuggy from Shook Earth Media and today we are talking about Fear of the Walking Dead Season 7 Episode 16. This is the season finale of my least favorite season ever and I'm glad that it's over but this is the big episode that we've been waiting for. We get to see Madison. We get to see a little bit about Padre. We're learning about what's going on and we'll get into my thoughts on all of that and how it turned out. As per usual with the show, there's some decent ideas here and a lot of sloppy execution. So that's pretty par for the course as far as Fear of the Walking Dead goes. I will say this is an improvement on most of the season. Just, But most of that is carried by the fact that we see Madison again. But we'll get back to my thoughts on what they are doing with her later on. And we'll just cover bits of the episode bit by bit. But if you guys like Walking Dead content, definitely stay sub to this channel. We're going to be covering it. It's, we're about to go on hiatus, but pretty soon here we got the anthology show Tales of the Walking Dead coming up. And of course, we will get back to season 11 when that drops later this fall. So I'm looking forward to that. So definitely stay locked on Shook Earth Media. And next month, we're going to have the Clementine comic to review. So if you like Walking Dead stuff, definitely keep it locked on Shook Earth Media. Hit the sub button and like button. I hope to hear from you down below. Now let's jump into this episode. So we start off with a teaser. This is, of course, Madison in Padre getting interrogated. We saw this in the trailer. Um, I will say that this whole bag on the head thing <laughs> for Walking Dead is way overdone. We've had so many episodes in this show and the original show, and I think World Beyond did it as well, where we have the this uh, mask that people are wearing, and we get to see shots <laughs> from inside the mask point of view shots. It's very overdone, but I mean, it, it works. That's why they keep doing it. It's kind of cool. It's a little different, but uh, it's it, it's just a little samey at this point. But now we got, we're caught up in Morgan. He's waiting for everybody to show up, and his main conflict right now is that the baby doesn't have food. Again, I mean, how many times do we need this storyline? Also, they had so much food at the sub. And the whole point of coming out here was so that the baby would be safe. And yet they don't have enough food for the baby. He didn't bring enough food for the baby. I would have thought that they would have had to write something where the food gets lost, ruined, stolen, something like that before <laughs> he runs out of food. So I don't know about that. I feel like he should have been a little bit more prepared. I mean, it hasn't been that long, has it? It wasn't really, it was like a day after that he left. The whole situation with the tower was done with, like the next day. <laughs> so they're not that far behind him. So he ran out of food in a day? Or is something holding them up on the way we're going to learn about next season? I don't know. They're not communicating on the radio. Who knows at this point what's going on with that. But I will say with the baby... This whole season, the baby has been nothing but a plot device for the show. And it's gotten to a very frustrating point <laughs> to me. I mean, last season we had the whole miscarriage storyline. And that kind of ended up feeling pointless because she loses the baby. And then a couple episodes later, a random baby appears in their life. And now there's a baby. And then there's one episode this season where she's dealing with the miscarriage situation. But then she just becomes the baby's mom. And it was really that whole miscarriage thing. She could have just had the baby. And th this it would have been no different. <laughs> we would be at the same spot with this storyline. And so it was a big, it was a big uh, detour to take, basically, to get to the same spot. And now we got the baby in the tower. The baby was the one reason that the war wasn't, like, didn't happen right away. The z between the zombies outside the tower and Mo the baby in the in the tower. That's the only reason the war didn't happen right away. And we just that was just the whole storyline was just stalling, stalling, stalling. Now looking back on it, especially so, uh, the the baby thing. And now we're still using the baby for for that. It's like we need to do something else with the baby. <laughs> Baby's just a plot device. Doesn't even exist as a character yet. And it's really, I don't know. I don't know if anybody really cares that much about the baby. <laughs> so he, he runs into this random lady. And here's a part of the episode I actually like. Okay, so we're getting into the themes of the episode. And we, we learn more about Padre. We'll get back to it later. But the theme is family. That's a big theme here. And this house, this lady's house, was her family's house. And we see all kinds of pictures of people from her past. 
and all of that stuff and we end up in their crypt later and I like the family aspect we'll get back to Padre and why I think there's potential there and I think it's a good idea not necessarily great execution but uh, I, I do I do like this character here uh, she's likable you know and and I like the situation and then of course <laughs> Morgan is in the tent he's not hi trying to hide his presence at all I understand the tent is so that the zombies can't reach them but at the same time, you're making it really obvious for the humans, which are the real danger, as we all know at this point in The Walking Dead. The humans are the real danger, not the zombies. So having a tent in the air and then having a light on all night, which is powered how exactly? Solar, maybe? I don't know. Anyways, I don't know why he wants to keep the light on. <laughs> it would draw zombies to your location and it makes you more obvious to people. So... It, 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 he should have seen it coming that somebody would come after him eventually you know i mean that's just how it goes and now here's another part of the storyline i kind of like i mean we got these guys in masks and they are connected to padre they have this thing where they bury people up to their necks in the in the sand and they're looking for their children and their children have been stolen they think morgan's the guy and it turns out, of course, it's not Morgan, it's actually Madison. Okay, so this is Madison it reintroduced into the show. So now I think is a good time to kind of jump into what's going on with Madison, how do I feel about it, and the Padre storyline overall. And this is probably going to be the make or break it point for this episode where you decide if you like it or not and what you think about the storyline going forward. So... Here we got Madison reappearing randomly. I must say, I'm actually glad. I was surprised when they announced in advance that she was coming back because it felt like you waited this long. All of us kind of assumed. I, I assumed she was always going to come back. And then a few seasons go by and she's not back. I'm like, okay, well, I guess she's not coming back then. And then she just kind of shows up randomly. So I'm kind of glad they announced it in advance so we have it to look forward to. As opposed to just her showing up randomly in this episode. I would have been like, there was nothing leading up to it. Nothing hinting at Madison before she just appears on screen. So it would have been like out of left field, basically. It's very random that she shows up again. So, you know, not that, I mean, that's the only way you can really do it at this point. Um, I, I feel like they should have brought her back earlier if they were going to. But they have to have reasons why she didn't come back. Or try to look for her kids or any of that. And I think that the Padre storyline has potential. But her connection to it is very tenuous. We'll get back to that later. Especially in the crypt scene where they get into a little bit more of what's going on with her. But it doesn't really track for me. And it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Her reasoning for what she's doing what she's doing. She's like brainwashed at this point. She's kidnapping kids for Padre. Here's my thing with that. One. Madison does not need... A brainwashing storyline to make her an interesting character she doesn't need a drastic change she doesn't even really need to be the antagonist right away none of that needs to happen to make madison interesting madison was always one of the more interesting dynamic characters on the show you never knew quite what she was gonna do um and that's what made her interesting she was a bit ruthless so uh, there's a lot that makes her an interesting protagonist and uh, I don't think that that's necessarily just taking everything that she was about and reversing it and saying that she was mind controlled, you know, not like literally mind controlled, but over time worn down and convinced to do things. You don't need to do that to make her interesting. But if you are going to do that to make her more interesting, you really, really need to commit to it. And this episode does not commit to it. And here's why. If you're brainwashed so thoroughly where you go from all I care about is my kids and making sure that they're okay, I'm willing to do literally anything, kill people, literally whatever it takes to make sure my kids are okay. You go from that point to, okay, now I don't care about my kids. I'm kidnapping other people's kids. <laughs> That's a big jump, okay? So if you're brainwashed that thoroughly... It is not going to be a one, one episode, 20 minutes into it, you're convinced and flipped completely 180 degrees. That would be very thorough, and it would be really hard to decode something like that. Now, I'm glad they didn't 
go with that because that would be really annoying to just have a character that's just completely opposite to how she used to be and we all want to see the real Madison come back and if they teased us with that a whole season it'd be very annoying but I will say it just makes this whole storyline fall flat it, it makes it unconvincing that she would be with this group for that long if she's so easily swayed the other way you know so uh that's that's the thing with Madison coming back in this episode it uh I I, I love seeing her again and there's little glimpses of her being her but it's really not her and they don't even commit to that in the sense of like her brainwashing was real easy to deprogram and it, it I don't know it falls flat to me uh but we get we get a nice little zombie killing scene here where she swings this hammer around and kills a bunch of zombies and of course I mean I like that obviously <laughs> that's cool so getting to see Madison do stuff like that and of course bringing back the hammer from when she killed Troy and stuff so I'm pretty sure it's a shout out to that is what what I thought of anyway so Morgan catches up to Madison Madison has l drops the baby off at a drop point and then comes over here but and leaves the baby on on its own and that's just to me like she knows that Morgan's probably following her right or somebody's following her she didn't take care of it I feel like she would have wanted to take him out and that's one thing with all these people that have kids left over first of all I'm not really sure that it makes sense that there's so many kids around and I'm also not really sure that they wouldn't why wouldn't they just kill the parents because that's like a loose end as far as Padre it's a security risk if their whole society is set up around we're kidnapping people's kids it would be in their best interest to make sure that the parents weren't around anymore because you do not want to have a massive army of people <laughs> who have vengeance on their mind, okay, trying to find Padre. Now, Padre's location is secret, so they may maybe can get away with that a little bit more. But uh, that's one thing, and uh, w there's a lot of issues with what Padre might be, but we don't really get to see too deep inside of it, so I'm not going to question too much of, like, what do they need these kids for? Do they have enough resources to provide for all these children do they really have this many people to take care of them? And the whole uh, concept of it, 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 it's something we're going to need to see more of next season before I can really critique it too much because it might just be invalidated and they might address anything that I say later down the road. So we're not going to get too deep into that, but keep <laughs> I, I am aware that there's a lot of questions there that we need to have answered. Uh, so... Yeah, I mean, we keep getting cuts to these interrogation scenes. We're getting into the whole mind control aspect. They got her on these kind of drug thing. It's like an, it says it's an oxygen tank. I'm assuming it's some type of drug she's addicted to. She's forgetting things. Her memory's not good. So that to me is like she's they're using this type of drug to keep everybody brainwashed, of course. And I mean. You know, we get. A, I, I like those scenes just fine. They play off well. Um, and honestly, if it was a full episode dedicated to Madison's backstory, I mean, here's the thing with bringing Madison back. I would have loved if we just picked up with her in the arena and then it covered everything from then until now and ended with her meeting Morgan. I would have much rather been there every step of the way because we're, we, we're bringing back the number one character after so many seasons. We really should have an explanation here. We do not have an explanation for why she was able to survive the arena or, or anything that's really happened since. And that's what we're all curious about. So I don't. I, I would have much preferred an episode where we picked up with her like that. Uh, but anyways, we, we bring her in as an antagonist. I've already said it's like a half measure. They don't fully commit to it because she's fully convinced the other way later on. But I do like that she and Morgan have this kind of scuffle. It's it's a good fight scene, and I I like you know that there's some like clever twists and turns in it, and then we get a little deeper into what Padre is, and then we get the realization that Morgan actually knows who this is and all of that. So this scene, uh, I I do like it, um, but yeah. So we'll, we'll just get into Padre a little bit more because we don't get to see inside it, like I said, but we get little hints of it. So we've been teased with it all season. And honestly, the teases we've got, it really didn't add up to much. 
this is the first episode we actually get any substantive information about them. So they're trying to set up this society where there's no connections. It's kind of a brave new world, if, any, if you've read that book. Where in that book, they've completely destroyed uh, familial connections. There's no families anymore. People are like grown in test tubes. And any kind of love and connection between people is kind of considered profane. Um, so it's kind of that concept in the Walking Dead world where they're trying to kidnap kids, take them away from their parents, raise them in a society where people view the collective and Padre and their society as a whole as the greater unit, the collectivist unit. I love the concept of these villains. I, I like that idea of them being the antagonist, them destroying family, because Walking Dead to me is about family almost first and foremost. It's almost about that more than anything else. It's about survival. It's about bringing your, it's about choosing your family. It's about deciding who are the ones that you're going to value. It's about living for other people. It's about building a new society. It's about all these things. So I really like the concept of the villains who want to create a society without family and having that be the driving force for the next season. I love that idea. It, to me, is really what The Walking Dead is about. It really encapsulates it. Just that idea. Family is everything. Family. And then the villains are family should be destroyed. So family is everything, always, all the time. And I think that's a great, it's a, it's a great concept. And that's why I say great concepts, sloppy execution. So um, now we don't really get, I, it's hard to say sloppy execution because we don't really see a lot of it in the storyline. But uh, yeah, having Madison go all the way from loving caretaker to killing, I, I don't know why we have to go, or not killing, but kidnapping people's children. It's so extreme. I don't know why this show always has to go so extreme with everything. In order to make Madison interesting, she's got to be the exact opposite of how she was before. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why we have to go so extreme with everything all the time on this show. Um, but yeah, I mean, they try to make it... I, I really like this deal that they work out. Where Morgan's like, I gotta save Mo. The only way to save Mo is to trade her for another kid. But they make it work because he, he met this woman who said that she's pregnant. And he... He, he knows, he thinks that she's in trouble. She has some health issues. She needs help. So in his mind, best case scenario, he gets what he wants. She gets to live. They get, and of course the, the mother and the baby are going to be separated at Padre, but he, he, he's thinking the greater good. Cause at least the baby's alive, all that. I really like that deal and that moral dilemma and all of that. So that, that part of the episode gets a thumbs up for me as well. And I like that they had this uneasy alliance. So that was cool. Um, and then we get the scene in the crypt, and it kind of all falls apart. We spend way too much time in this crypt. And this girl who turned, who, who it turns out, knew everything all along, knows Madison, and Madison kidnapped her baby. Madison doesn't remember because of the drug she's on. I think that's a bit of a crutch that she, Madison's having all these memory issues. Again, the, the writers are always relying on these things to make things more convenient for them <laughs> instead of necessarily telling the best story. So that's how I feel about the memory issues. But having her this twist where, oh, you actually kidnapped my, my daughter or whatever, it's really not that, that shocking. And then uh, my thing was like, why would she not just kill her right away? <laughs> you know, there's this whole standoff thing. And, you know, I don't know why she played along with Madison and Morgan at all if, that she, if she always knew that. You know, I don't get it. Um, the other thing was, as they were leaving the house, of course, we got coincidences in the show. The coincidences of the other p parents looking for their children, looking for Madison, happened to show up right then. Now, I don't know if, uh, I guess the lady might have contacted them or something, but it's very convenient, um, of course. And then, you know, she's like in this crypt and, uh, oh, my granddad was in his will, got uh, buried with his shotgun I kind of like that element, you know, but it's a little bit contrived when she easily could have just had a gun in the house. <laughs> I got to lead them out back to the script. Like it was her plan that there would be a bunch of, they had to come here because of the people chasing them. I, I don't know why she didn't just have a weapon already, but you know, this whole thing is really contrived. 
and then he tells the truth about uh, uh alicia and nick and again it's just like okay they're both dead now i guess alicia they want you to think that she's dead i didn't get that impression last episode but whatever she's gone now that was her last episode she's done so we're gonna at, pretend like she's dead until she shows up after her n- the next show gets canceled or whatever but anyways uh yeah this whole thing was really we, we had two scenes where we're trying to get this emotional payoff about Alicia and Nick dying and stuff. Those are characters, we've already dealt with that, so trying to have the audience care about it. And then also, like, the Madison brainwashing thing falling apart, like I already said. So, I I don't know, this scene didn't really work for me, and she didn't even really want to find her kids anyway, so wouldn't it be a relief to her at this point that they're actually dead or something? And then this is where she says that she was acting as this collector because she's afraid that they're going to find Nick and Alicia. And she did everything so that they don't kidnap her kids. Even though she spent this whole episode saying, oh, the kids are better off at Padre. The kids are better off at Padre. As if she's convincing herself of this. But she doesn't even really believe it because she didn't want her own kids to go there. So I don't know. And also... I don't know what, if they knew where Nick and Alicia were, wouldn't they have kidnapped them already? Wouldn't they already be at Padre? Are they asking for kids' names? Like, hey, what's your name? Do you know Madison? (laughs) And I don't know. And they do this whole thing in the interrogation scenes where, oh, your name's not actually Madison. But this whole episode, it's not like she has a new name. It's not like she's not responding to being called Madison. None of that seems to really get through either. So, again, this whole storyline, it kind of falls flat for me. I like the idea of Padre, though, but the whole Madison connection, I don't know. It's been years at this point since season three, right? Or season four? Uh, Has it been years? I don't know how long it's really been, but it feels like it's been a long time. And, yeah, so she's like, I don't want them to kidnap my kids. So... I'm going to do what they want, even though if they knew where my kids were, they would have kidnapped them already. So, and then they were, they were offering her like, oh, we're going to find your kids for you. But why would they even do that if their whole society is about how there's no family connection? That's the other thing that didn't make sense. Why would they do, unless the whole point was that asking her that question was supposed to be a test of if their brainwashing is working. But the brainwash wouldn't be working if her whole motivation is for her kids not to be there. That would mean the brainwashing isn't working because then she doesn't really believe in the message, right? So it, it, it all falls apart. It's not, it's very convenient. And then and then she's just like, yeah, just give me up. <laughs> and just a side point, I like the masks and stuff that they're wearing, but it it doesn't really make sense to me why they would have to hide their faces or anything. I don't know what if that would really help them. It feels like it would get in the way, and it's also pretty hot <laughs> in this area, I would imagine. So I don't really know what the point... I mean, they look cool, though. That's the thing. Uh, but yeah, Morgan's like, you're going to get everybody killed. And I, I like that. And then <laughs> this is the dumbest part of the episode, okay? So they bury Madison up to her neck and then leave her there. I don't know if any of you guys have ever been to the beach, but I have done late in this position. (laughs) I have buried myself up to my neck before. You're not, like, trapped. You can get out. (laughs) I don't know what the... Like, maybe they tied a cement block to her feet, (laughs) but she manages to get out later. So this show just expects you never to have been a beach be- at a beach before and done this because I buried myself. We buried my dad. We buried my, my mom. We have fun with this. So when I was a kid, we did lots of burying people in the sand and nobody died, okay? Uh, so that, that was really dumb. It looks very funny. I really like... And then there's this weird uh, montage thing where it's like... Oh, that, that was cool head split. But this weird montage thing where it's like toys... All these flashbacks of her kidnapping kids and dealing with the guilt of that, I'm assuming. And then, you know, getting saved by Morgan, which is very convenient. But, I mean, of course they would. And wouldn't they want to watch it, watch her and make sure that she dies? You know, like, this is the person that's literally stolen everything that they care about away. So, I don't know. (laughs) And he unburies her a little bit. And then, 
of course, this is the lady that he was trying to trade and he feels guilty that she died and he trips so he he trips over his feet and then she has to save him and then she does the hammer thing again, but it just looks so absolutely ridiculous when she's half buried in the ground. <laughs> it just looks really funny. And uh, she knocks them all in the head. I don't know. It, it This is just the dumb part of the episode, you know? You're supposed to turn your brain off and just be like, Oh, Madison's killing people. Cool. And then now she's on our side and Morgan is going to come with her and they're going to go to Padre. And that's where we leave off. So we're going to find out more about Padre, which again, like I said, has potential. Not against the Padre storyline. I love the idea of the whole family thing being the ongoing theme for next year. And I think it really fits with The Walking Dead. It's just this execution is really sloppy. I mean, I'm glad Madison's back. Uh, I'm not really satisfied with this explanation of like why she was gone for so long, why she didn't look for her kids, why uh, she's made this big shift from being a mother caretaker to stealing people's kids. I don't find it convincing. It's very extreme. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. That's pretty much my thoughts on this episode here. Yeah, I'm glad the season's over. As you guys know, this one, I didn't hate it as much. I just have these issues with it. But uh, I, uh, it was entertaining at least. So, you know, I'm, I'm engaged with it. I'm curious about next season. So I'll be covering it. So I'm going to continue covering The Walking Dead and all that. So definitely keep it locked on Shook Earth Media. As you guys know, Later this week, we're on hiatus with Better Call Saul, but we have a behind-the-scenes video about Better Call Saul facts about the production. So that video will be the next video that comes out, probably. And we're going to be covering lots of stuff. We got the Resident Evil Netflix show coming up soon. Uh, I was probably going to review... There's a Western with Gina Carano coming out in a couple weeks. We're probably going to review that. There's some other stuff, too, that I've been wanting to review. So definitely keep it locked to Sugar Earth Media. hope to see you guys in the comment section. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace out, everybody.